What's up guys, welcome to the show. Tyler P back with me today. Um, we'll get a little into that in a second, but uh, just a couple updates and news as usual. Uh, this past weekend we did the turf opener and it was an awesome time. I think we ended up having uh, 16 heats at towards the end of it. It did get a little cold and the breeze kicked up out of nowhere, so that was cool, but we, we, we pulled through and I appreciate everybody for sticking around and having, we had a good uh, awards handout and everything too. That was cool, pretty much everybody got their award so that was cool nice. and it was a good turnout um and also we had drag racing going on this weekend which turned out to be awesome as well everything went smooth there again the wind uh not a huge uh, fan of that for drag racing but they did put like the tarp up along the side of the fence which seemed to help um but all in all that went fairly smooth weather could have been a little better but it definitely could have been a little worse too so we took what we could get so shout out to the rns guys for putting on a good event and check out our events uh, page for the next upcoming ones for turf and uh, drag racing. So there'll be, I think, uh, I can't remember exactly one in May there. I didn't look it up, but there's a May 10th one, I think, for drag racing. And then uh, turf, I'm not sure. Check it out, events page, rcmanus.com. And then speaking of upcoming events, we have the dirt opener the 24th. And we are still yeah, on baby. track for that. Uh, we had a little trouble with the machine this afternoon. I ended up getting the wrong oil filter, but I got the right one now, so we'll get that back together. Um, so this week we're going to start tearing the tra track up a little bit. It's going to be roughly the same layout, but we're changing up a couple jumps, and we're going to break out that new roller. I still haven't got to whip that thing around, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> we're hoping uh, we're supposed to get a little rain. Well, by the time you're watching this, it might have already rained, um, but right now Wednesday. Tonight we're supposed to get some rain tonight, so that might put us out for tomorrow. So we're hoping to get the machine out there Friday, start digging around between Friday and Saturday, and hopefully get the roller out between Monday and Tuesday, roll it, pipe it next Wednesday, and have it ready to go maybe around Friday. We're not going to run the Friday night because we want uh, it to be all fair advantage for Sunday race event. Uh, we had discussed that back and forth for a while. Um, so the first race will be the 24th for everybody, so it's the most fair across the board for the layout. That's what we decided. Wow. Yes. That's not how I operate. No. <laughs> Usually be. it's try to jam in as many laps as possible. Well, there'll be a little bit of open practice in the morning. Yeah. Don't get me wrong about that. And But we don't, we're just going to have it the 24th. So does that mean that before that the track is actually off limits? It probably won't be done until right up pretty close anyway. But oh, okay. yeah, we're going to try to cut down on practice until the actual race just so... Everybody has the same fair advantage on the 24th. Well, there goes my strategy. Trying something a little bit new. I know I'm probably getting a little bit of backlash for that one, but uh, in all fairness for the opener, this is what we decided. And it gives the track and us the most amount of time to get it perfect. We got some new ideas rolling out, so we're going to try a fully rolled track this time around. So, As opposed to? Uh, sometimes we make the... Well, this one, this layout may still have some, but like the jumps you know, have a full peak on them instead oh. of having a fully rolled over so we can actually oh, roll the okay. entire track. Um, the guys went up to uh, LCRC, shout out to LCRC, awesome place and facility. The guys went up there at Pennsylvania at their opener race and they do a full roll track and they, you know, they liked how it looked and worked out. So Justin came back, we're going to implement some of those ideas and hopefully it works out for us. So shout out to those guys if they're watching or anybody that goes up there. Um, awesome place and they had a good time the weather didn't work out so great for them either but they still had a pretty decent turnout yeah sometimes it's more about yeah the thing i always preach more about having fun than yeah the five and a half perfect hour conditions. drive that they did <laughs> yeah for five and a half yeah if i drove five and a half hours i'd it'd be pressure off let's yeah. just enjoy it and yeah they're troopers yeah but awesome facility though i saw all the pictures and stuff so hmm. we got some things we're going to try here this year so but that's the update on the dirt track um I guess we can do the update on Tyler P because you haven't seen him in a couple videos. I am not dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically uh, toward the end of last month, I don't know. I mean, I when we were talking about what we're going to talk about right now, uh, yesterday via text, we are like, well, we need a subject. How about how to avoid burnout? <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've always uh, sort of taken times in, in from, from the hobby where I kind of take a step back. And sometimes it's to go do something totally different or sometimes it's to just get back into the restorations and the old stuff that I like to work on and just tinker in the basement and whatever. So I had a dirt car to build, which we're going to show in a second and had a couple of 
19 late 1980s Tamiya cars that I wrapped up the restorations on and they came out mint and then very carefully placed them on the shelves because <laughs> those plastics get incredibly brittle and uh, they look great and there's still plenty more cars in, in whip for me to <laughs> fix. Yeah, I'm planning on going over to Tyler Tyler P's uh, palace here next week. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll cop some pictures and post them up on uh, on the uh, Facebook there so you guys can check them out. Could do a video. Ooh, I don't care. Maybe a little a little video action at Tyler P's house. Can show the can show the the collection as long as it doesn't show the outside of the house. So. Yeah. Uh, we won't give away his, I bat, can his remain, bat layer. Yeah, so I can remain safely anonymous. But this is a pretty awesome collection. You showed me some pictures. So, yeah, we'll probably do some video or at least some picture action on that. So yeah. So check that out. Yeah, I'd be down. He's got quite the collection. Um, but, yeah, so just kind of took a breather. And, you know, I saw Chris today, of course, coming in the door. And Chris is like, oh, man, I was thinking, but Tyler P. doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> it's like it is no reflection on this place or the people. It's like sometimes you just do something you know, 110% for so long that you, you kind of just need it, need to hit the pause button. And for me, the doing, dealing with the old cars, because it's such, it's nostalgic, but it's also like, holy moly, look how far the engineering in these cars have come. Are uh, you what we're about to look at? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a breath of fresh air. So that was, that was kind of the deal is uh, pretty much from when the mini Nats were up until now, I've, I've popped my head in a couple of times, mostly for, uh, supplies and food and water. And, uh, and that's about it. But yeah, if you want to move on to the next thing. So we were talking about dirt racing and upcoming this coming week. Yes, I think I said that right. The 24th. Tyler P has finally joined the team. He's got a... Yeah, so this is a Team Losi. I should say TLR. Tom Bishop will correct me. This is a TLR 8 XE Elite. Probably just hold it up, actually. Works pretty and uh, it has my... Now, uh, I guess custom trademark bright orange with white window yes, paint uh, job. It goes your paint, man. I, it's I got a guy. You know something? Honestly, just being straight orange, it's a pretty it's a pretty smooth paint job on there. To be honest with you, yeah, pretty uniform. Honestly. Yep. Did you paint these or this window mask still in there? Oh no, that's that's painted. That's painted. I'm custom. I'm so dumb that I have to remove the window mask and actually paint it. Custom white tinted windows. Yeah, I uh, you know for a fee, the standard fifty dollar to paint a body fee, I will do this to your car in whatever color you want, as long as it's orange. That's a pretty good deal. But uh, yeah, so uh, it's it's the TLR car. I went with TLR because I I always. <sighs> I don't know why, because I drive associated indoors on the carpet, but I like to have stuff that's different if I can have something different. If TLR had a carpet car that worked better, I would probably have that car. Sorry, anybody driving Shots TLR. Fired. Shots fired. Um, so that's why I went with this, and plus I was like, well, it moves a car that maybe, you know, from Chris's inventory. That I'm surprised maybe... that you didn't wait for the associated. It's So that's the other thing is I did not want a pillow ball front end car. Okay. I speak the camber link language. I understand it somewhat, and I'm also not a four-wheel drive expert like some of these other guys out here. I don't I've actually been having that argument all week, actually. Yes, and it's it's over my head. I'm Team Techno. Justin is Serpent, which is also a uh, what, what are we calling this? Pillow ball uh, or, no, or this? This uh, uh, C Hub. Yeah, C Hub, C -Hub Camberlink. Yeah. C Hub Design, and then Trip is Mugen, and he just picked up the Associated, and he's and Pillow Ball. Both pillow ball. So we've been arguing back and forth which one is better. You can't really. I think I like the C-Hub design from the maintenance standpoint. I think the pillow balls, you got to stay on top of the maintenance a little better because if yeah, those probably. stop pivoting, then the suspension binds up. But in the same note, the C-Hubs have a few more screws and bits to go wrong. So it's it's really a toss-up. I don't think one's better than the other, but I'm Team Techno, so i got to go C-Hub. There you go. The, uh, the Tylers have spoken. <laughs> C-Hubs it is. But I, I love the car. This was my first ever A-Scale build. It is a nice, it is a nice car, and uh, it it went together phenomenal. I, I got to give a, a just, may, and maybe all the other cars are like this. What in the garbage bag is going? Hold on, on, we'll get there. Come he's on. he's mocking me for my OCD, um, <laughs> but just the the fit and finish of the parts was really good. Even down to like the shimming in the rear diffs, they're calling out to like half a thou of diff shim, and it was spot on, which was pretty surprising. Um, the car has a much more ESC. I run that in my tent scale car and I really like it, so I figured eh, I'll, I'll go with much more again. 
uh, I think a Protec steering servo, and then the Hobbywing 2000 kV on-road motor, which is why it's sporting the hefty, hefty garbage bag black plastic, because I can't have holes in my motor that I bought knowing full well that it has holes. Okay. Go we, ahead. We had this talk about this motor having holes in it a while back. I know we did. I believe Justin was on the podcast when we did. He did. The for holes once. were better for cooling, and now you just taped them all off. I can add fans. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. I wouldn't do that. I, I Look, if it looks like garbage it. after one run and it's coming off, it's going to come off. <laughs> Just let me have my, my car looks yeah, clean it's for, gonna be all for a month. That's going to be all gooey after that and all melted to it. Uh, okay, <laughs> good point. <laughs> you, you mock me now. The, the achievement here is that this car is not going on a shelf this way because that did occur to me. I'm like, oh, it looks perfect. Oh, just I could it. build a second one and then race that one. That's how bad it is up here, just FYI. Um, associated. And then, it pulled up. <laughs> but then the other thing I did, even though everybody said don't bother, was I did get... Um, I don't even see that. I think Sumo is the brand, uh, makes these skid plates. That can't hurt. You know, I... The chassis do wear down pretty good in the back on these things out there. Right, and, and I figure, you know what, if that maybe gets me two seasons out of the chassis instead of just one, then why not? But We pretty much change them out every year, more or that's, less. That's what I figured. And then, uh, so why go with the uh, the much more? Just curious, just for just for cause you can. It's sort of the same thing as why the low C, because I like to have something that's not. Give it a try. Everything what everybody else has. I'm kind of fed up with Hobby Wing, not in the sense of like I'm displeased with their stuff, but it's like it's everywhere, and just, I I don't like when one brand is just ubiquitous across a hobby. So for me, it's like, give a little love to the, the smaller company. Um, and see what happens. And see how it runs. The, Might the, be good, right? Their 10th scale stuff was great. I loved it. It looks nice. It's all aluminum case on there and stuff. Yep. Looking like a nice speed control. It's programmable with their SHR card. Um, it'll do two different output BEC voltages, so I have it turned up to the high voltage. Um, you know, and then it's got all the bells and whistles you'd expect out of a top end ESC. I think it's rated at 180 amps. Okay. So it's kind of between like the low end hobby wing and the high end hobby wing. Yeah. So but it looks nice. We'll see what happens, right? Yeah. Um Yeah, these low C cars, they did a nice job with this. I was never really a low C or TLR TLR fan up until this A scale because I didn't the previous ones always for one they used standard hardware, which I, I hated. And I think this only got standard hardware in the somewhere in the sway bar, I think, right? Uh yeah, possibly. Because yeah, they all use they use standard hardware up to the 4.0. I think this wow. was the one of the first ones that went 99 percent. That's surprising. Metric, which I hated because everything I worked on up until that point is all metric, so I just kind of stayed away. And then this car came out and it's pretty nice. They got a lot of nice little add-ons. Um, I think the only thing you did you the only thing you add on was the aluminum crank. I did. I did the aluminum, you know, servo saver, uh, yeah, upper piece, whatever you want to call it, and. Uh, Mr. Bishop has informed me I need to do aluminum C-hubs as well because the factory plastics are a little bit on the weak side. Okay. So he's going to hook me up with it a does set come, of those. But it does come with the aluminum... Uh, knuckles? Yeah, bearing carriers in the front and the knuckles. Yep. I didn't know it came with this bit here, the chassis brace piece here, aluminum as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the mount where it goes to the transmission. I'm sure they've got a new car on the horizon. No pun intended. Hey. Uh, that was pretty good. I didn't even think about that. Um, they should probably use that in their marketing. New car on the horizon. TM, I just trademarked that. I'll charge you. That's a verbal agreement. That's a trademark. <laughs> um, but, yeah. so this will probably be, well, it is the older model by default because there's always something new. But they did a nice job on this. I'm curious yeah. to see what they're going to do on the, uh, the next model. I was never a huge fan of this setup. It seems to do the job, so I can't really hate on it too much, but I was always I always liked it on the motor plate in the front. It wasn't bad for for being the first time I ever saw that motor mount configuration. Yeah. It really wasn't that bad to figure it out. First time I did it, I forgot to put the O-rings in it. Yeah, it's problematic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you then you don't get the the squeeze. And then uh then there was three different size O-rings, I think. Four. Four. And I was like, "Man, which one do I use?" Yeah, it's basically yeah. find the one that's it's not loose and not tight. Yeah, it's kind of, it wants but to be But once it was in size. there, I really didn't have a problem with it. Um, my only other gripe with this car, not to just sit here and talk about all the things I don't like. No, go ahead, bash my whip, please. Um, the steering rod ends. 
I always they always pull out. I put Mugen ones on. Uh, I have I ha that report has made it to my camp. Yes. Uh, the honorable Mike Coombs informed me of that, and uh, Chris confirmed it. So. Yes, that was my only gripe that the steering rod should have been a little thicker and thread in a little tighter. Yeah. But other than that, I didn't really have any problems with that. I ran the uh, so I ran the Truggy version of this for a good while before I got the Techno. Okay. So that's why I didn't actually run the buggy. I've, I built a couple buggies, but I didn't run the buggy. I ran the Truggy, which is essentially the same, except it does have a it doesn't use a motor mount like this in the Truggy. It uses a regular faceplate one or whatever you want to call it. I wonder so why I the Truggy would be different. I have no idea. Well, I think I think because they when they did the Truggy, they did the, the you bought it and it was the nitro or electric in the same oh. box. Oh. So I think just the way that that center, whatever. Yeah. I have no idea. That's the only thing I can think of. Could but be. It was a good car. Can't knock the TLRs. Good stuff. Yep. But and, uh, and yeah. again, that's not going to be the limiting factor. I will be. Exactly. Dirt. So. Dirt is such a level playing field that the cars are hardly ever the right. What's holding you back? I'm sure I'd do just as good with this as I would a techno or vice versa. Yeah. But, so. Yeah. So Tyler, he, in the A scale game. TLR. That's awesome. Get an A scale. If you don't have an A scale, you are not cool. <laughs> You're not cool unless you have an ace scale. Unless you pee your pants. <laughs> we were all thinking it. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to fire this thing up and run it. Another ace scale news. The Associated, the new one did come out, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I think I've like five or at least five guys are going to be running it this year. Mm. Um, Trip brought his down, and it's awesome. honestly a really good looking car if you guys haven't looked at it yet. Trip has the Associated? I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything. Well, he brought it down for show and tell, so the cat's out of the bag. Mr. Trip. Yokomo has an associated. So Yokomo doesn't make an A-scale. Fair. So all the Team Yokomo drivers, as far as I know, run Mugen, which is Which kind of makes sense. Same continent. Which, which is <laughs> which is what Trip uh, ran all last season and probably the season before, and still has and probably will run, but he just really liked the way that associated was looking with the saddle pack batteries and stuff and wanted to give it a try. Probably good for balance. So... That's what everybody is going to now because that saddle pack battery design seems to be the way to go. That Serpent's running it. Now the Associate. Oh. Now the Associated and uh, somebody else. Oh, I think Kyosho does it as well now. Gosh, Kyosho. So really, Techno's the only one defecting. And I heard through the grapevine that there may be a 2.0, 2.0 coming out that may run a dual battery setup. I don't know if that'll be this year. That's. That was deep through the grapevine that I heard Techno possibly doing hmm. a update or maybe even a conversion kit to run two saddle packs in their buggy. But uh, don't take my word on that one. That was from a friend of a friend. Interesting. So the dual the dual battery pack <clears throat> design might be the way to go for A-Scale in the upcoming chassis kit, so we might see a lot of that. My only concern is run time, because we, like we like to run the 10, 12-minute mains. Right. So oh, and the biggest sh shorties that we could get were like, six i don't know six thousand sixty four hundred or something like that which is pretty good this is pretty good don't get me wrong okay so we're gonna see what happens there because we've been cramming john because the serpent john and justin they run full length batteries which are 8200s they're full length stick packs they don't run shorties in their trucks and same with the kyosho was full length packs so are you saying that the the issue running the full length of the main is for trucks only or trucks and buggy? Truck, we never have a problem because we just put 8,000 million brick four cells in there. The problem with the buggies is the bodies don't fit on those, these big brick bodies because it hits the side edges. Okay, okay, thank you. Trucks are built like trucks, so you can pretty okay. much fit whatever you want. You could cram the battery in there, your body just sits like this. Right, because I bought a low, a low, low profile battery and it's like, whatever, 6,000 ish million. Yeah, we're just concerned if we run a 12er, you know, if those six thousands are gonna be able to make the whole race so give me a little trial and error on that one could be completely wrong could be not a problem at all and i really hope it isn't so we can just run them but we may have to knock it down eight minutes or something like that so well, eight nine or ten minute mains are still significantly more than i'm used to running anyway so basically what we're gonna do is take one of their cars out and slap it on the track and just time it until it dies that's basically what we're gonna do cam go run that like yeah. a racehorse yeah. <laughs> All right. You died at eight and a half minutes, so we'll run eight minute mains. <laughs> Don't do too many hot laps. 
Well, that is going to require some trial and error, but it will. No big deal. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Mint. So, yeah, and that car went pillow ball like you were talking about. Yep. We do have a couple in stock now. Uh, we got a few hop ups coming in the aluminum hubs, the aluminum pillow balls. There was another part. Oh, the aluminum diff pins, I think, but I think those might have just got sold out. What comes in the kit? Steel pins, I think. See, now. But I don't know why you would change them to aluminum. But thank you. I understand doing that in a 10th scale car. Yeah, weight is where obviously. You, where not... you are power limited and you've got to get the most out of the car, but not the case with these. Do you uh, really have to optimize the bejesus out of these cars? Like, maybe at a high, high, high level, but. I don't know. For me, or I people always... just like bling, like well, <laughs> that yeah. you never I mean, see. Sometimes it's just about buying stuff, right? I don't. I can't knock that. That's you know, how it. That's what pays the bills. No, but buy stuff. It's good. Um, I always like to get it into a scale because, like, you bought this car and it's it pretty much came with everything here except this aluminum, which arguably should have came with that piece. Mm, fair, but it didn't. But whatever. That was another twenty bucks. Right, and actually on top of that. It came with every sway bar the car needs. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you, you buy, know. like, one, we'll roll right into it because we're going to talk about the new B6, too. So, if you buy a B6, you end up buying the aluminum steering rack, uh, maybe some different bushings for the front. Uh, what else we got? Camera mounts in the back. Wait, ball play, studs for this. Heavy Wait, front place. bulkhead. Yeah, just all kinds of this stuff. And you end up spending, you know, a couple hundred dollars more on your car in hop ups easily. Whereas A scale is like, you just it's it's everything you're talking about buying these c hubs which are probably good but i'm gonna say probably not necessary i don't know tom's probably saying they i are. mean i'll run them till i break them you know it's that's what i'm saying we can we can do that durability testing and they don't break nearly as often for the amount of abuse that these are taking yeah proportionally like you'd expect them to break more. we take this thing and we launch yeah. it off of a 20 foot kicker and it lands like this oh. and then you just yeah and it keeps going that's pretty crazy. Well, so that's a funny point then, because like you take a tenth scale car, it's three hundred fifty bucks, and then you say 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 you go conservative on hop ups, you spend one hundred fifty. That's a five hundred dollar car. Yep. But yet people walk in here and you're like, well, it's six fifty for a four wheel eighth scale buggy, and they're like, that's ridiculous. That's so much money. I could never run a scale. It's like, mm. yeah, <laughs> they're really not that far apart. Yeah. And you're getting so much more. And by the time you buy a certified motor and a high-end speed control and servos are roughly the same, give or take. Yep. It's really not that much different than running it. Well, and and it's a lot more fair too, I think. And right, because it's an open class basically. Yeah, you wanna you wanna build this thing to go a hundred miles an hour? Knock right, yourself out. Go for it, buddy. Good luck here. <laughs> yeah. That's all it is. It's like yeah. you don't have you know, we all most of us run roughly the same electronics, you know, 19 to 2200 kV motors. Yep. There's no certified A scale motor that's $200. Well, that's or the thing. I $300 think $300 or whatever. I don't know what I paid for that here. Uh, 130, 150, something in that neighborhood, yeah. right? I must have spent $1000 on stock motors this winter for for 10 scale. Right. For, for 10 scale. Now it, granted that's cuz I'm stupid and I like to play around, but Yeah, but a new hot motor comes Those out. motors are just as much if not more. Right. A new hot motor comes out for 150 bucks. You're like, oh, well, I gotta try. It. I gotta test it. Yep. This motor, if as long as the bearings hold together. Oh, that'll be in the car until I run die. it. You'll yeah. run it next season, next season until it just lets go for something, and you'll probably just yep. replace it with the same motor. <laughs> Honestly. Maybe ones without holes. <laughs> He's a hole hater. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> but I think I think when you really boil it down, cost wise, I don't know how we got on the subject, but cost wise. 10 scale, A scale, really not that much different. No, and you can make the argument that A scale, it's it's a better value. Yeah, at the end of the day. I mean, this thing's loaded with hop ups I will and, give them, and high quality stuff. I will give them the tires. The tires are not as cheap. It's probably twice. It's effectively twice as much to put tires on these puppies. Yeah, this is true. And they do tear them apart pretty good. Um, yeah, but, well, I'll find that pain out. Yeah, that's a bit rough. I'm not going to lie about that. But it's what it is. Um, I don't know. That was pretty much my spiel on A scale, I think. Yeah. Tyler P getting into it. I think uh, B6.4. Do, do, do. Rolling back into 10 scale after, our, after us talking crap about 10 scale. 
The new B6.4 just got dropped, uh, 6.4D and the regular 6.4, which effectively is the carpet version. I don't know why they don't just put a C on it, but whatever. Um, they just dropped those. We do have them on order. I don't know exactly when they'll be here, but uh, they are coming. It looks pretty good. Tyler P. read about it a little more than I did. I looked at it. I was like, it looks like a B6.3 with a millimeter more of this. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I'm not really wrong, but... You're not. I'm not really right either, I guess. So, I'll let Tyler P crack into it a little bit deeper. So, my take is this. The car, from the description, because they obviously don't go into, like, measurements and details and super crazy stuff, but the description on AE's website, what it essentially says is, or what I'm hearing, is, is that they're updating the car to make it like what most of us were running the car, the B63 like. So the, the reduced caster, um, finding ways to put weight further forward, and, and it sounded like the battery will be further forward. They're using the same cradle to hold it, but I think they might have just moved the pockets in the side rails. Just a little deeper in. Deeper in. It they also like that. They said that you could move the electronics further forward. No? The, the yeah. ESC tray is further forward. Um, so they're they're obviously trying to get a little bit more nose weight without making it nose weight. My, my personal opinion is a heavy bulkhead is not a great way to add weight to the nose. Do you want to shift everything in the chassis forward? You, I think the forward weight, you want it behind the front tires as close as you can get, all within reason. When you start putting it on the very front of the car, I feel like instead of trying to rotate that weight through the turn, you're, you're trying to move it on a pendulum. It's like a, uh, what do they call that, mid front engine race cars? Like a Ferrari where they set the engine behind the rear axle, but it's still front engine car. Behind the front axle you mean that's what I, that's what i said right you said rear axle i think or maybe i misheard anyway the, yeah that's the front the engine is behind the front axle but still in front of the car instead of being over mostly the, like, over the front like axle. a pickup truck hanging yes. over the front exactly so same kind of deal i i have no no means of substantiating that but that's kind of my gut feel based on my own experience and, and so forth so well, they seem to be putting a lot of money into it so it must be doing something <laughs> yeah right other than putting it all the way in the back so it's, it's a lot of front end and, and front weight bias changes, which you can duplicate on a B6.3, and most of us have already been doing these things anyway. So that doesn't, and this is where, when we were talking before the podcast, he's like, meh, over the car, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit more excited. I'm not over the moon. The part of the car I'm interested in are the new shocks. I saw that. Bigger diameter basically just means more volume in the shock, the shaft is displacing per volume less space when it when it compresses. I saw that too, but and they're machine pistons. Yeah, that's nice that they actually come with the machine pistons this time. Yep. I wonder, so, you, you, you see if it comes with the machined internals as well. I don't the little bits in the. Bottom. I don't. I don't think I saw that. That would be nice. But I. I didn't. Because those were kind of expensive it. to buy afterward. The machined internals. I've never done that. I've never gone full full fossil. I've done it shocks. a few times just you know to do it but yeah um it'd be nice if it just actually came with them yeah i mean for 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 yeah. what it cost although machining versus molding the, the cost is probably somewhat significant i would um, imagine but yeah so to me my only trouble with the bigger shock is now that all those springs that you have are different are they though or aren't they 12 mil shocks that are on it or are they 13s that are on it now they're 12s they're going to 13s but if and this is where I, I haven't dug deep enough. If the springs, ha I mean, you're talking half a mil on each side of the spring. So if the springs had enough clearance on the body, it's... But the problem is not so much that the body is, is the collar takes up all the space. So now the collar has to be a millimeter wider and those springs fit tight on the collar. Do they? Yeah. So on, the, on the top? I would imagine they have to come out with a new spring set, like a mm, V3 then, spring set. Uh, so that So if that's the case... That's kind of a kick in the knackers because now anybody well, that's, that's what I'm saying. stocked up on springs, that, that kind of sucks. Well, that was the trouble with, you know, I don't want to say it's the trouble with Schumacher, but they make their own springs because it's a thicker bore and then they run that tiny cup on I the bottom. Know. So I you have that. to run Schumacher I springs. I hate that so much. Yeah, I mean, it, it works, but it's kind of annoying because if you've collected all these 12 millimeter springs over the last, whatever, five years or something like that, I don't know. Oh, more, yeah. You basically. <laughs> And you gotta buy all thirteens. But so, but in fairness, like right now, I, 
until probably the, the tail end of this season that just ended indoors, I was running the stock springs on the car anyway. I think Associated usually has their poop in a group with what they give you. I only deviated from that because I was running one of the, the team driver setups I, I, kind of on a lark. Yeah. I ended up really liking it. Um, I'm just interested to see if they come out of the V2, or V3 spring now, I guess. They're, 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 they're going to have to, I, I would think. But whether they do or don't, my approach initially, since I, since I can look at my car and sort out the front end to make it like a 6.4, Right, I can say my my six three is roughly equivalent. I don't care about all the nose stuff. Sure. Buy a set of shocks. Buy a set of shocks. Hopefully they sell them in a pack because it's a little tricky to get them for as a complete shock pack. Right. I mean, there's going to have to be people out there parting these kits out or something. But that would be what I would do is I'd throw a set of shocks on my six three, and see if I like them. I mean, with all that being said, I'm going to have a six point four come carpet season. At the end of the summer, anyway. Once I'm done with a scale, well, and that turns into like, do you want to pay a hundred dollars for a set of shocks, or do you want to spend three hundred something? Well, I've already sold the other car. For the well, no, I, I don't mean you. I mean like as a individuals. You know, yeah. for three hundred bucks, you get a fresh car. You don't have to go was, through it and rebuild your old car and put. I was hoping for a little bit more. I was hoping for a B7, maybe change up that front end. But the more I think about it, it's like. I mean, it does work. You know what I mean? It does. Why change it if it does work? And from a hobby shop parts standpoint, it's good that they didn't change all of it. But, I don't know. The kid inside of me wanted something crazy, new-looking B6 thing. I don't really know what I wanted, but I just wanted it to be a little bit more. But at the same time, from the logical side of me, I know. That's what needed to happen, is it's going to be a good car. I, I think we're not going to see any massive car Losi is the only brand I see right now that needs to come out with a you know 22 6.0 C Losi needs to come out with a new carpet car their old one requires way too many mods to make it competitive if you look at what any of the team drivers are doing right but everybody else has kind of had their their stuff together so you're going to see iterative changes, which is what we've been getting out it's of like, uh, X-Ray and Schumacher and, and Associated, because we've climbed the learning curve of high grip. Yeah, it's, it's not six years ago. It's basically come down to like Samsung and Apple with their phones. You can only change so much because they're on the bleeding edge of exactly. coming up with new ideas. When, car when high grip was new, even go, go back 10 years... There was no mid motor. There was there there was, was no development. Easy these to were make significant changes. Right, you could you Makes could sense. do these crazy things and oh we're gonna put the motor in the middle and now we're gonna put the motor further in the middle and and now we're kind of at the point where I Hashtag think Team C. the cars are oh remember that too soon <laughs> they were ahead of their time and so was Durango they were just too heavy of course being ahead of your time doesn't matter because they're both dead yep so pioneered themselves to death. <laughs> Mm, there's a lot of innovators that never get to li I like my live Durango to see four-wheel drive. The Durangos were so cool. Flashback to the DEX 410. Oh man, what was it? They had like the Pro Kit or something. I had some other name with the saddle pack. R or something like that. It was like 650 bucks at the time. Yep, I had one. I came with all the cool oh. aluminum bits. It was wicked cool. You pull a whole diff out the back. Yep, it was a cool car. But well, and even their 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 two-wheel stuff. <laughs> It's gone. Um, even their two-wheel cars, you could build the transmission in three-gear, four-gear, rear motor, mid-motor. It was a cool kit. It was, yeah, that was. Wish I had one now, actually. It'll be worth money someday. Sad. <laughs> Probably not. But yeah. I wouldn't mind, no, I know, I wouldn't mind, my head. Wouldn't mind throwing it on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, so B6.4 looks promising, as always. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be something going on with the four-wheel drive, too, here pretty shortly, because... I don't think they're in stock at the moment, but I could be wrong. So everybody's gonna learn that when something goes out of stock for more than a short period of time, it's the when the car goes out of stock. It's the Grim Reaper standing next to the old car. And when the car goes out of stock in like five fairly key pieces, like the diff and like arms or some kind of drive shaft, it's like, oh well, next new car. Yeah. But you know something, I don't mind how they do that because they go out of stock for quite a while. A long enough time for us to sell off some stuff, and right. then they drop the new car. So I, their method is not bad. No, not at all. Because, like, well, like you said, if they came out with a brand new car, look at the inventory that would basically yeah. all of a sudden just be like pff, Usually a useless. solid month or month and a half of just 
radio silence and then hey the b6.4 just came out i was we we're out to lunch and sitting in there sitting there hey b6.4 came out I was like, oh, crap and then we just ordered them right there somewhere on lunch yep that's pretty good but yeah. yeah i'm looking forward to it i'll end up buying one yeah we'll probably do a video once they come out of a three to a four maybe i can dig up a two and a one we'll line them all up i got some back there i know I for sure we got threes and i still have my original Ooh. That would be fun. Throw the original in the mix. See Dino how far it's come. Sore. Because the original is actually, talk about incremental changes. The original is quite a bit different than the other one. Right. So, but. Yeah. And and that's where, it, you know, it's, but that car was what, 2015, 16, the original B6 came out. So we're six years into the life of that platform. And if you compare the original to the 6.4, 4 will spank an original B6. When I went to the 6.3, I was shocked at how much better it was than the original car. And exactly. I thought much, I had mine set up good. How much good. easier it is to work on, too? That, that rear end? Differential. Yeah. yeah. Splitting the diff. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Or the training case. Yep. So. Yeah. Low C. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, dog? What up? <laughs> but I'm sure that'll be in the next one. It has to be. Otherwise. That's that's what I'm saying. They, they need a hard iteration on their car. I need to change my diff fluid. Give me 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just miss the second round. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. TLRs. <laughs> TLRs catch me. Oh, Sorry, so Tom. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but anyway, yeah, there'll be a video on that probably the next, I don't know, whenever that comes out, next few months, I guess. I, I don't know. I think a side-by-side -side from the three to the four will be enlightening because you'll be able to see, even if it's like two pitchers lined up, yeah. you should be able to see where the weight has, how much further it's moved. Three to the floor with the original like mixed that. in. But yeah. So I think that's uh, pretty much all we had to discuss today. Uh, like I said, we're going to head to Tyler P's, maybe do a little video over there and possibly just some pictures or something. I don't know, see what happens, but stay tuned for that show off his collection. Uh, tune in next week for an undisclosed topic. TBD. <laughs> to be, yeah, to be determined. Probably a couple more A-scale uh, updates before the opener. And if I don't see you beforehand, have a happy Easter, and uh, we will not be here Sunday, so... We're going to be closed. Don't come down. You can still rip the track, but... Clean up after yourselves. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys in the next show. Later.